you're looking for. <laughs> Holy cow. <sighs> hey, everybody. Hey. It's Eric. And Robin. And this is Stuart Perspective. Yay. Hey. Episode number seven. It's taken us a while to get to here. <laughs> So much grand, grandiose ideas of doing this. Originally, I wanted to do yeah. two shows a week. What a moron. Yeah. Because I see people that do things like every day. Oh, my God. Like people that have, I mean, they may not be that long. I mean, like, you know, five minutes, ten minutes. But they still do stuff every day. Every day. I have trouble getting out of bed. The Pethewicks. The Pethewicks in France. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. They sit there and they, every day, five every days day. a week. We'll see you tomorrow. It's like, okay, whatever you say. Wow. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so we went from two days a week down to one day a week, and now we're looking at about a week and a half, two weeks. We'll get better, I promise, but I've been having some audio things. It sounds like I'm in a tin can, so I'm trying a couple other microphones, and we're going to see which one works best, but pretty much the RV, the shoebox we're in, is an echo chamber. Yeah. Uh, we put up a blanket <laughs> on one side of us. And we're thinking about how to put up another one on the other side of I this. I don't know. To where it seems more like a room. Well, if this other if this other microphone works, then we won't even use our regular podcasting stuff. We'll just use the other microphone. Uh, I kind of like our microphone. I do. I love our microphones too. But in the in the old studio at the house in New Hampshire, we had it deadened well, and it worked. But man, deadening this RV is. It's becoming bothersome. I don't know how to... It's deadening us. Yeah, we got to get out of this. <laughs> it is so deadening us. Anyway, that's another story. Hey, look, oh, where are we at? Let's okay. start off. Let's go with the uh, Pop Ed stuff. The Pop Ed. The Op Op Ed. Ed. The Op, Op Ed. Ed stuff. And um, I, I want the biggest thing that's been going on, and it's the, the Biden and uh, what did Jesse Waters call it? The Car-a-Lago. car lago document <laughs> debacle. Yeah. car lago Or otherwise known as what's good for the... No, that's not, no that's not it. That's another one. That's, that's later. One. That's later. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I get ahead. <laughs> uh, so it, it, this one here, um, the main gist that I want uh, that I want to point out is ten classified documents were found at the Penn Biden Center of Diplomacy and Engagement. Woo! And they were found around November second, twenty twenty two. Mm -hmm. A full six days before the midterm elections. But mm -hmm. when did the world find out about it? Two months later? January. <laughs> January 9th, for crying out loud. I guarantee you, I guarantee, as Justin, what's his name would say? The the, all, I guarantee. Uh, that if that would have been <laughs> Trump, you'd have heard about it they, that yeah, night. Yeah, that night. It would have been out. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So you already see that. So I'm wondering. 76 days. Before you get into everything else that's yep. been found er and said else. and yep. done and what's going on. Yeah. Is, you know, when I first started seeing all this, I was like, are we seeing the beginnings of the takedown? Of oh, the yeah. Biden? I've got that down here. Yeah. Oh. Well, I'll keep going. No, that's a but, solid. We can jump ahead a little bit. But, can... Yeah. I mean, they found all these documents in different places. I didn't even know they were there. Okay. That's a whole nother what in yeah. itself. Because if the president slash when he was vice president slash congressman doesn't know how they got there. Doesn't remember. Then how did they get there? You know, yeah. that's my whole big thing. It's like, well, then. They were, they, they were secured in my garage yeah, with my garage. Corvette. Yeah. He pointed that out several times with my Corvette. My gas using Corvette. Corvette. That we have pictures of Hunter Biden driving around. Driving around and in. receipts where Hunter Biden paid you $50,000 a month to rent that house. Right. And had access to all these areas. Yes. Because they have now found multiple areas in this house. With multiple documents, um, some of them going back 14 years to, to when he was a congressman. Mm -hmm. What the hell? Yeah. And the big thing about all this is, you know, a lot of people say, oh, well, this isn't as bad as, as Trump. And I'm like, what? Because what? Trump was president and he was able to take those documents. Okay. Right. Biden, before now, 
was not president. He was vice president. And then he was a congressman. Congressmen are not allowed to take those suckers out of a no. room that they look at them in. And even the vice president <clears throat> is not allowed to take them out of a skiff is what you're talking right. about. Even yeah. vice presidents don't right. have yeah. that ability that a president does. Yeah. So, you know, you got two times here where he had these documents and, and they're saying, oh, well, you know, when they pack up and leave after they've lost the election, everybody just kind of throws stuff in boxes and they have to get out. Yeah. Okay. A, who's stolen all this stuff in boxes that's top secret and classified? Yeah. yeah and he, they're, they're saying that, that Trump had them and it's, and um, what Biden's done is doesn't compare to Trump. Well, Trump, had constitutional power and right of declassification. It's called declassification power. As the president, he could declassify anything at will, and then that's it. That's it. But on the other hand, though, he had them exactly where they told him they needed to that the, they needed to be. They were locked up in his house. In his house, locked up. <laughs> locked up in a house that's guarded by Secret, Secret Service. Service. Now, they showed that at uh, the Wilmington, Delaware residence of Biden, there were no Secret Service people there when those documents arrived. Yes. But as president, they've been there as him being president and they have monitored, which is why the White House says there's no there's no log of people that have come there. And the Secret Service is like, uh, um, we've yeah, got we, a log. Yeah, Hello. Yes, yeah, we, we kind of did. Just, oh, it's so much for communication. Ask but us for it. Even if there's Secret Service people there. If you have those in your garage, who who knows who goes in your garage? Yeah, you know Hunter could have been in there looking through everything. What's it? Oh, yeah. yeah. What if, what if you what if your wife decided to have a garage sale while you were out of town? <laughs> right. Huh? She obviously doesn't know what's going huh? on either. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of scary and to think that you know he had this place at at Penn, um, the Penn Biden Center. Penn Biden Center. Thank you, and. After they so-called hired him to be a professor, what did he teach? Uh, in, oh, nothing. nothing. He never taught. He a got a million dollars a year, though. Yeah. For nothing. Right, and then the Chinese There's put a been whole bunch of money. Sixty-four found foreign investors from China, and they don't know what connections they have to anybody else or anything in the in the China Chinese government or anything like that. And they're looking into that right now. Right. 64 known foreign investors yes. have invested anywhere from, what was it, 54 to $100 million? Right. And then you have this $50,000 a month Yeah. That's... that Hunter is supposed to be paying his dad. Uh, you know, if you watch, and if you have been watching uh, over the past couple of years, you don't really see Biden going anywhere that Hunter is not with him. Yeah. Hunter, his wife, and their little girl. Yeah. They seem to be always with them because Hunter doesn't want to be somewhere without dad and be caught having to ask, answer questions. Yeah. You know, he doesn't want to be out somewhere by himself or with his wife or whatever. And all of a sudden, here's all these people asking questions and he's just sitting there going, Ugh, <laughs> uh, because he, 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 he's not going to answer the questions. Right. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah. Yeah. He has to be around daddy to protect him. You know, let's look at the other side. Maybe Daddy's like, uh, "You're not going anywhere without me." All right, you have screwed. Maybe you're the, right about that. You have screwed the pooch so much to this point. I want you by me <laughs> all the time, and my handlers are now your handlers. <laughs> Maybe. 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 You know, when you when you've got some something like a hunter. <laughs> yeah, a hunter. You have to do everything you can while you're president of the United States for him not to fuck yeah. up. I really want them to um, investigate each one of these documents. And I mean, literally, I want them to fingerprint the documents that were in that house. And right. I want to see is Hunter Biden's fingerprints on these documents. And that's what I said that a couple weeks ago. I was like, oh, I want these suckers fingerprinted. I want to yeah. see who's been oh, touching yeah. them. And then who was it last night on the Gutfeld show? One of the people that were on said that they were waiting for the fingerprints and everything to come I don't know. So they about. did that. So I think that they're probably. I wow. Mean, come on. Wow. You know, you should. DNA. Oh, wow. He says about DNA and fingerprints. Wow. I, I don't know if that's actually happening or if that was something that he hopes will happen and come come out. But I dang sure are classified documents. I want to know who's been touching yeah, them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I had a thought and it disappeared. Where did he go? <laughs> um, KJP. 
Uh, oh, she's looked like a major idiot with this. <laughs> Oh my god! I didn't like her beforehand, and I told I've, you've heard me talk about her blinking, and it just looks like when you blink sporadically and a hundred miles an hour and looking off in a direction, it shows you're trying to think of a cover. Right. You're not. You're, you're not looking ready. away, and you're like, "Let me give myself a couple seconds to yeah. to figure this and out." And you just look. Um, but you know, I came to a realization last night uh-oh. when I was sitting here. Uh-oh. I realized that I could actually do that job. <laughs> I could. All I would have to say is I'm gonna have to refer you to fill in the blank. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm not gonna answer that question. That she has. She... I'm gonna refer you to the Department of Justice. Yeah. Uh, I'm not gonna answer that. I'm gonna refer you to the Department of Justice. Uh, Every I one was of her clear. answers. I was clear when I answered that question yesterday. Well, obviously you weren't clear, or we wouldn't be asking it again. Yeah. And the questions they are asking are yes or no. Yes or no. Not the. Uh, I was clear when I said this. Was like, no, you were not. Or mm-hmm. he takes this very seriously. Apparently, he freaking does he not. He freaking doesn't. And if you keep referring us to the DOJ or the White House special or Council or yeah. Legal Council, DOJ, get them in here. DOJ has said talk. Yeah, but we, well, we're not telling we, you not to you know, talk. Talk. You need to go away, lady, because you're not helping us. We need not. those people in here now, so they can answer the questions. That's my initial reaction. But when you were sitting here thinking about, I was sitting about sitting here thinking about. <laughs> I think they may actually they may actually have left her out to dry. They may have left her out to dry, and she has no answer. Well, well what I because she's thinking, not turning her little book. Right, and I'm thinking she knows they left her out to dry, and they're not giving her anything. So she's like, you know what? What's good for you? Yeah, is good for me too. I can do the same thing to you. I'm just going to refer everything to you. Yeah. And if that is truly what happened, then I feel sorry for her. Yeah. And continue doing what you're doing. I mean, um, she's been out there every day for the past how long, flapping in the wind. She doesn't know what she, what to do, what to say. I don't know. Uh, blah, 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 know. You know, getting getting into it with Peter Ducey, who I love. He's a yeah. little, you know, little crush of mine. But I just love him. I love him because he asks great questions. He does have. And uh, you know, they see this and they know this is going on, and you know, she's had to go to somebody and say. Help me here. You know, son of a... Mm, Give mm, me mm. some help. Yeah. So, yeah, I think they may be leaving her out to dry. I think so. And speaking Maybe. about leaving out to dry, this goes back to what we kind of started a minute ago talking about. Um, who do you think is leaking all of this? Was it the Republicans or do you think it's the Democrats trying to take down Biden? I've always thought it was Democrats. Yeah. It's I a, it's a Democrat one. somewhere doing all that. They're in they don't all want him, They don't want him running yeah. in 2024. Yeah. So, They've made that clear. Yeah. They don't want him. More, a lot of people don't want the people out there say they don't want him. They want somebody else. Yeah. So, and a large part of me would wonder, um, Mr. President, would this go away if you simply say, "I've chosen not to run in 2024," mm-hmm. and then just declare yourself a lame duck president, mm-hmm. finish out your term, mm-hmm. and they'll leave you alone? Yeah. They won't see how quickly you. You, they stop finding stuff. <laughs> wow! Imagine that. <laughs> see how quickly all that. Goes Imagine on. that. Yeah. But he's got somebody, yeah. possibly his wife. Possibly one of his handlers saying, "No, no, no! You need to keep acting like this. You need. We need you to to to, to run in twenty twenty four. And he thinks he's going to run. Right. See, uh, I don't understand that. You know, if they don't want him to, then who? Keeps, I think there's multiple factions. Who keeps pushing them on, though? I don't know. I think there's multiple factions in the Democrat uh, organization. Now, yeah, I mean, I really, it's so freaking fractured. Yeah. Well, there's somebody, some group, somebody telling him how great he's doing. <laughs> you know, because he always you're talks about how great, great he's doing. Yo, you're doing you great. know, all the wonderful things that he's done. Do, and, do, do. and you know, I mean, I mean, uh, sidestep right here. This past week, they've been talking about a lot of the corruption going on in Ukraine, and how many of the <laughs> oh, top God. people in these cities have been let go because they've been seen with you know stuff that obviously you know all this money they have to have to be driving around. What was yeah. it, a Porsche that one of them was driving around somewhere? Yeah, and it's, it's like, ridiculous. you know, we're giving all these polices are giving all this money to what help it, fight this war. And then you have all these big time, you know, big people uh, in the government driving around the, nice the, vehicles. The total that I had thought of, I, I, I'd have added up, I think it was $103 billion has been sent to the Ukraine. And is that like just cash? Here you go. Or yes. does that also include That's all of money. the guns and. That's money. Okay. Just That's money sent to them. That's a lot. How much again? I Are think you? I think I'm not, my my figures came out to 103 billion. I think. Okay, and how much were they talking about to do all the student loan debt forgiveness? How much was that supposed to be? 
Oh, that was that was that was that trillions. That was started out at seven hundred billion, mm-hmm. then to nine hundred billion, and I think it's one point six trillion if they okay. were gonna if they were gonna completely okay. do them all. Right. But I don't know what this. I don't know where what the figures are on that because guess what? Nobody's talking about it. Nobody gives a crap. That's pushed off. It's yeah. never gonna happen. Mm-hmm. You know, I just. Uh, I'm kind of divided on that still. I'm still divided I'm still because divided. hey, we've been approved for it. It's <laughs> I've, I've been approved for it, and, I'll, well, and for I will the take, twenty thousand. I don't care. Yeah, for. I'll take advantage of it. I mean, I will. They want to give it to us. If they want, if they want to give it no, to us, I mean, if they want to do it, it's I'm a taxpayer stupid. too. You know, everybody who mm-hmm. is getting their loans, yeah, taken away or whatever you want to call it, forgiven, yeah. they're taxpayers. Yeah, everybody's taxpayer, and it's all going to come back down on you, just like every single dollar that goes to Ukraine or any it's other country that we send in the one point seven trillion dollars for this infrastructure bullshit. Yeah, it's like it's all taxpayer funded. You know, people. It's so funny how young people and some older people still don't have a clue that they always say, "Oh, but it's paid for by the government." But oh it's God. free because the government's it's paying not. for it. Where do you think the government gets money from? Thank God the Republicans got a hold of the pur- the purse strings, and on that deal with the eighty seven thousand um, officers, armed officers for the IRS. Mm-hmm. And remember, they said they were going to go after the billionaires. There's yeah. six hundred and six billionaires in the United States. You need eighty seven thousand armed officers to go after six hundred and six right. billionaires. Right. You're an idiot, and anybody yeah. that believes that's what it was for is a moron. Here's what it was for: two things. One, they're going to use those those people to come after every one of you individual little people out there listening and not yeah. even listening. Small business. Small business. The middle class, middle the class. lower caste, you're going to be paying yeah. for everything. I mean, and two. Okay, go ahead. Two. That was a cover. He, they knew the numbers they projected on the rest of that bill. They didn't have enough money in it to cover it. So they put the 87,000 officers in there and agents in there showing they'd have to pay for them to jack the price up so they had the money to cover the rest of the freaking bill. Well, they were never going to hire this 87,000 officers. Well, they're not now. They're not now. <laughs> <laughs> they're really not now. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no, you it's that. okay. I just, uh, you know, talking about, you know, small business people and how, you know, most of you are probably on the up and up and do things exactly the way you're supposed to. But in our travels all around everywhere we've been, um, there was an RV park that we stayed in, in one state, that uh, did all of their everything in cash. Cash only. I'm not going to say which one. Okay. But we were there for a month. A month. And it was really loud there because there was a certain thing across the street from us that lots of people came to. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh. Sorry. I'm not going to say which one. I'm not going to go there. But he, he oh. wanted your monthly grant, everything that you paid in cash. In now, cash. You and- cannot tell me. And the place was a dump. I'm it sorry. Was. It, it was, was a dump. But at the time, it was the only place we could find yeah. to put our RV. And we we, li- you know, we we literally had spent two days driving around, and, and for a job that I had there, and we were going. This was the last stop, and we'd already declared if they didn't have anything, we were calling up John, the, the, the owner of the company, and saying, "I'm sorry, there's nowhere for us to live. We're going back." Going back, and it was it was that last. It was that last place, place and I was ba- I was sitting there going, "Please don't have a spot. Please don't have." And a spot. they had a spot, <laughs> and they did, and I was like, <laughs> "So, I mean, you were literally like what six, seven feet apart from the next people." It was so damn close, we can almost not have our awning out. Yeah, but what pissed me off the most is. Our front door, when you put the steps down and you open the door and you step down through the ground from that last step, if you take two more steps, you are standing in the dump station for the guy right next to you. That place yeah. was a shithole. A poop pipe, it, if you will. It was a shithole. It and was. Ugh. So yeah, it was six hundred and sixty dollars a month. And that inc- that did that include the electricity? But if you had a if you had an electrical fireplace. Yeah. They wanted to know about it yeah. because they were going to charge you an extra, what was it, 50 or $70? It was, it was quite a bit. Because I mean, just they to knew. have your electric fireplace. I mean, who has anything other than an electric fireplace? In an RV. RV. You're going to have a wood burning one? Oh, that's smart. <laughs> you know, burn that sucker down. That's real smart. So, yeah, it was just, it was, it was horrible. It was uh, a dump. But he wanted everything in cash. In cash. And you cannot tell me that at the end of the year, he's putting down 
exactly every penny uh, he took. And that that taxes. one month they had a couple. I'm, I'm not going to say the name of the place, but there was your NASCAR was across the road, right across yeah. the road. Yeah. They had like three races in that month we were there, and the day the weekends of those races, the park was overflowing. And the amount of money that was coming in there for those weekends, you know, they were making a shit ton of money hand over fist. Yeah. And he's taking cash only. Cash only. So, <laughs> you know, so there probably is a lot of that kind of thing in certain places and stuff that going on. That needs investigating. And it does need to be looked at because, you know, if you take in the money, you, yeah. you need to say you took in the money. But I've, I've been a. I've been a, a contractor of mine. I've had my own contract company since about 2001, so 21 years. And um, I've been as honest as you possibly can be. And the people I've worked with, uh, the majority of them have been honest. There have been some that put the con in contractor, and nah, those <laughs> jackasses. Yeah. Yeah. They got There's a special place in hell for those people. But for the majority, yeah. I'm still friends with... Uh, the vast majority of them, I talk to them a lot, and I, I wish them all the best all the time, you know? And they're good, honest people. Good, honest people. But, yeah. Um, so, anyway, I can see, you know, yeah. where so, there, totally there could sidetracked be a, on the RV a faction <laughs> of the population where, yeah, we do need some people looking into that. Yeah. But yeah. 87,000, yeah. I don't think so. Yeah, it, well, it, what gets me is, there, again, their their comment was that they needed these extra officers and agents to go after the billionaires in the United States. There are 606 registered billionaires in the United States. You need 87,000 armed agents to go after them. Right. Bullshit. Yeah. Bull. That is the yeah. shit of the bull. Yeah, because you can't tell me the IRS knows who all these billionaires are, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. And if something comes from them that doesn't oh, yeah. look right, come on. You're not just, oh, I don't know who this, you know, Joe Schmo guy is. You know, they know who they are. Yeah. All right. So on the document thing, I think it's the, be it's, I think it's the first onset of the light of the train coming down the tunnel to hit Biden. Yeah. Uh, I think it's them yeah. doing and, their best to really get prepared to push him the hell right. out. And if it doesn't, yeah, if it doesn't take him out, it's going to make him look really bad. Yeah. You yeah. Know, that's just. It's going to really make him bad. Yeah. They had All to, right. they had to do that. Okay. okay, so next thing here that I, I have on my notes is uh, uh, the Democrats that were expelled from the committees, okay? That's become, in the last couple of weeks, a pretty big talking point. And it's all about the, if it's good for the goose, it's good for the gander. Hold on. <laughs> Knock that shit out. This isn't what it, what did, what did they call it a minute ago? This is a eighth grade playground politics? No. Yeah. No. So if you do an eighth grade, oh, you do it to me, I'm going to do it to you. No. Which I can see that on some point, okay? But yeah. But in all fairness, in the 107th, 17th Congress, they, uh, the Republicans have said, hey, you know, you're, you're choosing to kick people off the committees, and this has never happened since the founding of the Republic, and you're doing it because you don't like what they said. You're setting a precedent that's not going to be good, mm -hmm. you know? And, and we wouldn't do that if we were you. And now it's come around, and yeah. there we go. It's yeah. coming to bite you in the ass. Yep. But in all honesty, you, you kicked the other people off because you didn't like what they said. Okay, we got one that's kind of like that, but I've got an argument for that. The three that were kicked off, Adam Schiff. Um, Ilhan Omar. Yeah, and um, Swalwell. And Swalwell. Okay. I don't uh, remember his first name. I don't even know. <laughs> as much as we talk about it. I don't know. Who cares? Douchebag, Swalwell, whatever. <laughs> anyway. So... On Schiff, man, this guy is just, he's just as crooked as a, a snake, man. I, I, he just seemed, he spent four years, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, he's been pushing a falsehood. Yeah. Russia, 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 Russia. We have the evidence and it's going to come clear. Yeah. You never once brought a freaking thing forward yeah. because it was all bullshit. Yeah. So why... Should we leave you on the National Intelligence Committee? Yeah. You're, you're, you're a snake in the grass. Yeah. Well, he was pushing something like that because, A, he hated the guy. He hated the guy. He and Pelosi, and Pelosi dreamed, I just want to get him on something. That was all she, she wanted the whole four years he was in there. He, she she would just keep bringing stuff. I just want to get him on something. It's like, it's like here's for me, 
I, I don't like Biden. I, 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 I feel sorry for him. I think this is elderly abuse, what they've done to this man. I think he needed to retire and just enjoy the rest of his life. Uh, dragging him out and, tre- and doing the, what they've done with him as president, I think is horrible. And I don't like him. But do I wish him ill? Do I wish him to fail? No. I wish he would be badass and go up there and step up to the rest of the world and tell him to shut the hell up and let's get our shit straight here in America. But you're not doing that. Right. You're kowtowing to everybody. Mm-hmm. And it's, it, you're making us look weak as hell to the rest of the world. Yeah. And it's it's no good. So I don't wish him ill, and I may not like him, but I really wish he would succeed as president. You know, we yeah. need we need a president to succeed. Right. Now, at the same time, Schiff and Pelosi didn't. They wished him to Trump to fail because they didn't like him. Right. Get your freaking at, at the um. What's the word? I emotions. Get your emotions out of there. Is what I'm thinking. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. No. I just thought you know when you would rather have your president fail and have your country fail. You don't need to be in the you office. Know, that says something about you. You don't need to be in the office. We don't need you. Right. It's like, I don't there. want my country to fail. I don't want Biden to do badly because that will make the country do badly. Yeah. You know, I want our president to stand up for us, yeah. do his best for us. You hear that, Biden? We're not counting you out. We're just not happy. Right. It's okay. Like, you know, you, you, like you said, count out to everybody else, all these other countries. Everybody's like, oh, this guy. He's an idiot. You know, I can do whatever I want. Oh, my God. He the won't other say anything. The, he won't do anything. Us. You know, and you didn't see that with Trump. <laughs> no. no. They no. stood in there where no. they were supposed to and were nice. <laughs> and so with all of that, with Schiff and all of that, mm-hmm. that's the main reason for getting him off of the intelligence committee. And they've said today that we're not, we'll let him be on, be on a committee, but he, he can't be on a committee that's dealing with national intelligence because he can't be trusted. Right. Honestly, the man can't be trusted. Right. And that's my point of view. You may not agree with that, and that's fine. Okay? Let's go to Swalwell, Swalwell. because it's the same kind committee. Same reason. Same yeah. committee, okay? Yeah. Swalwell had a Chinese spy as his personal yeah. assistant. A known, proven Chinese spy. Who, who fled the country? What was her name? Bang Bang? Oh, no, bang, that's bang. what they did. <laughs> That's what they did. Her name was Fang Fang. Fang Fang, and they did the Bang Bang. They did the Bang Bang. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, Bright, what they say, Breitbart has confirmed they were in a consensual relationship. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So don't tell me they weren't. They they were. Okay? It's been proven. And she, when they when they labeled her and found her out as a spy, she immediately jumped ship and fled the country. Yeah. Are she you gone. freaking kidding me? She, she gone. gone, man. She gone. I searched the world over and thought I found true love. <laughs> They called her a spy. She was gone. She was gone. <laughs> oh my God. Here so, we go. So Swalwell, with that, uh, if you what was I don't even remember the the uh, the code that they were talking about, but the description for the classification. Oh, of, was uh, was it DC? DC one fourteen or something like uh, that. I don't remember. But under the description of that, it was basically uh, any known relationship of any kind with a known spy of another government and you are not qualified for security clearance. Yeah. So yeah. he is not qualified to have security clearance. And if you're not qualified to have security clearance, why in the shit are you on the National Intelligence okay. Committee? committee? Get him yeah, the hell out of here. Yeah. Put him on the National School Bus Committee or, or some shit, the, you know? Look over the janitorial stuff that goes on Under in the, the Capitol. Yeah, Put him there on you that go. Committee. <laughs> yeah, something like that. So, Trash Committee. So that's those two. You can say we're being petty and stuff like that, but no, there's legitimate reasons for not to have these guys on the National Intelligence yeah, Committee. Yeah. You know, uh, <clears throat> back in the day, they would actually uh, kill people who were proven to be spies. Mm hmm. And it's called you know, treason. I mean, called treason. It's you know treason. There, there was this was a big deal, like sixty years ago. Not even sixty a... years ago. In the eighties, this would have been a big deal. Oh wait a minute, how long ago was that? That's <laughs> holy shit. I'm old. <laughs> that was forty. Years that was ago. forty years ago. So, so hmm. God, it just seems like yesterday to me. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, so it doesn't seem that long ago, but to go back oh, to the God. 50s, you're going 70 years back now. Holy shit. You know? But that was, yeah. It was, I mean, a, it was big a big thing. deal. Patriotism you know, was a you, big deal. You, they thought you were a communist. You were sparkled. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Man, the red-blooded 1980s Gen Xers. Look at freaking Red Dawn for crying out loud. Yeah. Come yeah. on, man. Yeah. And now it's just like the stuff comes out and everybody just kind of goes on with their day. It's like, yeah. huh. Yeah, whatever. Okay, our government's a bunch of... Uh, Let know. me jump back on TikTok where they can get my information yeah, anytime they exactly. want. Exactly. Exactly. People are like, oh, it's not. there's nothing going on between... You know, China's not trying to take us over. Bullshit! Okay. I got okay. another topic on that in a minute. Okay, I'm sorry. No, no. Keep going. We've still got one more to go on this one. <laughs> oh, go, well, and I was just saying, you know, China... China's you, trying to take us over. Let's just... You know, look, they're busy making got, their people smarter. You got TikTok. While making our people... Dumber. They're controlling their people like crazy. You got mm-hmm. TikTok getting all of our information that they can pull anytime they want. They're buying up all the farmland around military bases yeah. in America, and we're yeah. letting this shit happen. Yeah. Dig deep and look at all of the businesses that are owned by China or somebody in China. Yeah, and, and, the, and the, the connections they have to the communist regime. Regime. regime, yeah, because these these business owners, these big business owners, these aren't small business; they're big mm-hmm. businesses. Mm-hmm. All they're looking at is, oh yeah, but he wants to give me the most money for my business. That's all it is; it's money. Yeah. Oh well, this American guy who owns these other businesses wants to give me X amount, but this yeah. Chinese guy is offering me a million dollars more. Yeah. So it's all about the money, and they're not thinking, thinking. far, it's very far ahead. On yeah. wait a minute, you know, yeah. The, so and and. From that aspect, if you were that farmer that's held on to 500 acres that your family's had for 100 years, and you're in a position in your life where you have to sell, I can, I'm not going to 100% fault the guy. I'm not going to 100 Is it shitty? Do you need to take a look at it and say, hey, wait a minute, my grandfather who got this property wouldn't approve of this. Right. But was it only a Chinese person or company that came to you with an offer? It's true. You know, were there other offers with other people? Was, mm-hmm. you know, maybe to build houses or something? Was it maybe, you know, housing? Yeah. Some guy wanted to come up and buy it because I want to build some houses. Yeah. You know, I mean, was that the only offer you got? Yeah. Whew. Sorry, a little sidetrack on that one there. But uh, last person, <laughs> last of the three, okay, okay. is, um, what's her first Ilhan name? Ilhan Omar. Ilhan Omar. Okay. Now, this one... <laughs> I, I there's a lot of reasons to not really particularly like this person. Uh, a lot of things that she said and done and stuff. And uh, but what, this this kind of irritates me. She was on the um, what did I tell you? She was on the International Affairs Committee. Was it Foreign Affairs? Foreign Affairs. Foreign Affairs, foreign affairs Committee. Committee. Dealing with foreign affairs around the world. Okay. And some of the most despicable things that she has said about Jewish people. So much so that the our own. Democrats on the committee had to institute, um, what did they do? Rules and stuff, establish rules in place that you're not allowed to say things like that. Yeah. And you shouldn't be. You shouldn't anyway. be. Period. Period. You know, because that's racism. That is racism. <laughs> to the I mean, extreme. I hate saying that just about everything. But yeah, that but this is. This is flat out. That's flat out you know, racism. That's what it is. And, um, oh man. So, if you can't see the reason for kicking her ass off of the um, Foreign Affairs um, Committee, then I'm sorry you can't see the freaking nose in front of your face. that person's judgment is not going to be the way it should be when it comes to certain things. It's not going to be in the United States' best interest. Right. I don't think she has the United States' best interest in it. I don't think so either. I don't think so either. I don't think any of the squad do. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I I have yet to figure out what exactly that they are. I have yet to figure out why people or keep re-voting them back in. How, did, how the hell did AOC get back in? I don't know. Maybe, it, it, all I can think of is the person running against her is worse. <laughs> it's way worse. Or or it's just name recognition that nobody cares and they just, oh yeah. And she, back in she needs to stop her... her um, Drunk tweeting and stuff that she does. <laughs> when she's talking about people, you can tell she's sitting on her couch. And she's just she's sitting on probably about glass number six or seven <laughs> of some kind of wine because she's got the rosy cheeks and she's just a slight <laughs> slur on a couple of things she's saying. I'm like, okay, turn it on. Take okay. somebody, take the phone away from her. Her husband needs to get a wrangle on that little girl right there. 
I'm sorry, <laughs> that was not right. That was not right at all. Because <laughs> I think she holds his nuts. That was the other voice he in comes, my head. He comes in the house, check your nuts at the door, boy. Probably. Well, yeah. he might not even have them. She may have them somewhere. In the purse. In the purse all the time. He, just, he doesn't get to check them anywhere. <laughs> She has she has on a keychain and like 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 and she's just going clink 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 clink. It was like that old timey thing you used to play with as a kid with the two balls on it and the clink 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 clink. Yeah, you know, back and forth. Yeah, the yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. knockers. Whatever knockers. <laughs> I don't know what the thing that ball I knockers. I don't know what it was called. <laughs> I, don't I don't remember. I had, I don't, Alan um, had one and I used to play with it and I smacked myself in the head with it. <laughs> God, how many times were you hitting the head? A lot. Okay. It's starting to answer a lot of my questions. Okay. So anyway, moving on. Oh, God. So, yeah, uh. that's the three there. So you can sit there and you can say it's the um, what's good for the goose is good for the gander or we're doing eighth grade um, um, playground politics and stuff. That's fine if that's what you want to think. But look at the individual people. Look at the committees they're on. And, again, they've said – we're not going to not let them be on committees. We're just not going to let them be on these committees. Yeah. Okay? The big, the big committees. Yeah. The Girl Scout Cookie Committee. That's <laughs> the one they need to be on. Whew. Oh, yeah. okay. okay. So, my next thing going right along. There with... are Chinese. Okay. Here we go. Chinese secret police stations in the U.S. Yes. Huh? Chinese secret police stations. Now, what gets me, what gets me is this was literally a 15-second blurb. On one of these stations. It wasn't even a blurb. It was the thing running it as the ticker. At the bottom. Running across I, the it, bottom. No, they said something about it for 15 seconds. Oh, did they? I didn't hear and that. that saw one time. <laughs> one time. And Mike, hold up. Let's back that back the truck up here. What Chinese have secret police stations in the U.S.? Here's what I've, what I've dug up, okay? The FBI has found and is aware of at least no less than 54... Chinese secret police stations throughout North America, including one in New York City and three in Toronto. But do we care about Toronto? <laughs> I do. We I don't like care Canada. what's in Toronto. I like Canada, but that, I mean that's just the that's the numbers yeah. I pulled up. But fifty four. Now these, what these are what the the Chinese people, the Chinese government is labeling as overseas police service stations. Okay, which if you look those up, those are just. Um, they're not uncommon for countries to have in other parts of the in other countries, okay? And they're basically stations and stuff where if there's a case that they're dealing with in their country that crosses international borders and stuff, they actually have officers that will come over and they'll work on those cases here. But 99.99999% of the time, those cases, officers, and everything like that are doing it in conjunction with state, local, and federal governments, my question is, why do they have to be called secret police? I don't know. Why do they have to be a secret? This one, this one, I'm, I can tell you why these are a secret. It's because these are not operating in that manner. Yeah, okay. They are not in conjunction with any kind of a known case. They are not in conjunction with state, local, and federal governments. And as it, everything they've been able to find out is these officers are stationed in communities and mm-hmm. cities, and they are suppressing the, their their. their Oppressing the government's oppressing the gov the the Chinese government's. Re- it's the word I'm looking for. The way that they press down on their people over in China. What's the word I'm looking for? Oppressions. The, yeah. The oppression the, of the government. The government the, oppression yeah. on on its people. They are yeah. they are continuing that here locally. Well, I'm wondering what keeps those Chinese that are here just walk out the door and say, "I'm out." I don't know. I am not dealing with this anymore. Chuck you, Farley. I'm in America. You know, how do you I know? become a citizen? Because I'm done. Yeah. Chuck you, Farley. I am out. Unless you they're know? so brainwashed that they think that. Unfortunately, I think that may be a big part of it. That yeah. may be a big part of it. But the, why aren't we doing anything about these places? And why is nobody talking about it? Why is it just a 15-second blurb on a freaking talk show at 4 o'clock in the afternoon? Yeah. That's I, – I don't have an answer for that. <laughs> I, I don't have an answer for we that. We don't really have answers for anything. <laughs> yeah. We just bring up stuff, and everybody else can kind of lull on it and figure it out. It's like, I, I don't know all the answers. But... Extolling. Extolling? Extolling their oppressive government control on its people. I knew I had that written down somewhere. <laughs> if I actually read my okay. own notes. Well, yeah, I saw that, but I was like, uh, if he put it down there, he should know. It was the next page over. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, anyway, think Holy about crap. that. Chinese secret police. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Chinese secret police. Yeah. All there right. could be one in your neighborhood. There mm-hmm. could be. All right. So, now we move on Woo! to our... That's... 
That's the op-ed stuff. Let's have a little fun. Let's talk a little pop culture, pop culture. and some of the fun stuff that we did in the last week and a half here, okay? Uh, first thing that I put on the list here was... We uh, found a, a show. A, well, yeah, you yeah. found a show, and then I started watching it with you, and it was, like, really cool. It's, it's a fair warning. You've got to read um, su- um, subtitles. Yeah. Through half of it, okay? Yeah. There's a lot of <laughs> subtitles in it because it's in Lilyhammer. Lilyhammer, Norway. Yeah. So. And that's the name of the show, Lily Hammer. Yeah. And the best way I can describe it to you is it's basically Tulsa King in Lily Hammer, Nor- Norway. <laughs> Except the main character in this one, um, he was not, he didn't go to jail for anybody like that. He was a, he was a good uh, capo and he did a great job. And, and uh, the underboss that he was under loved him and everything like that. But he died and the son took over and the son was a, he told him, you're not worthy of holding the spot. Your bean counter. That's why your dad. Your dad. We're always... talking about Tulsa King. No, this is Lily Hammer. Because it sounds just like Tulsa. It King. sounds just like it. But no, <laughs> I'm like he's talking about. It sounds King. just like it. But Tulsa in Tulsa King, he was in jail. He did the a twenty-five right, did year 25 rap. Years for this him. one, he didn't do the rap for it. He was he was good with the boss, and the boss died, and the son took over, and he told him at the funeral. That he wasn't worthy of t- of running the family. His father kept him in the accounting department because he's a bean counter, and that's where he needed to stay. So the guy put a hit out on him. Oh, see, I missed the first. You know, the... you no, you were right there because what happens? I next, wasn't watching it then. You weren't watching I don't remember it because any of this. he's okay. he's sitting in his bar after walking his dog, and his dog, his name is Lily, is um sitting at the bar. And somebody comes down the steps and starts shooting. That's kills, where I started watching. Kills the bartender and kills ends, the up, dog. ends up killing the dog. Right, okay. And that was the straw that pissed that him off. That was it. Yeah. He killed his dog and he called the, the feds and he turned coats on him. And on his, his one condition okay. was, I want you to relocate me and Lily Hammer, Norway. Okay, because no, I, I liked I, watching the, the, the Olympics in 1994. <laughs> and nobody will ever think to look for me there. And they, and they almost didn't. They almost did, and that's another part of the story. I'm not gonna get into the whole. Okay, part. Yeah, we're not gonna tell you the whole thing. Watch it though. It's 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 hilarious because he's he's this Italian mobster in Lily Hammer, Norway. Norway. It's it's really funny. It's a really funny show, but it's also got some graphic kinda, violence. Kind of dark. Yeah. Kind of dark. But... It's got a dark undertone to it. And the main character, I don't remember. I don't remember the character's name, but I want you to know who the actor is. And most people. I actually, you saw it. I didn't see it. Okay, you, it, it's Steve Steve Van Zant, aka Little, Little Steven. Steven. Okay, yeah, and Little Steven, the, the guitarist and founding member of Bruce uh, Springsteen's E Street Band. Yeah. Okay, yeah, he, very uh, very very talented singer and musician. Yeah, and he he sings a couple times. Yeah, he, he does. He some sounds pruning. like yeah, he sounds like um, Frank, Sinatra. Frank Sinatra. Oh my gosh, oh, it was, was awesome! Like, wow, it was awesome. I loved that episode when they got him up there and he started singing. I was like, oh yeah, look at that. Yeah. Yeah. So it, he's if you don't know him from that, then you might remember him from his most. He went. He did acting along with being in part of the band and everything like that. And his most famous role, he played Silvio Dante in seventy nine episodes of The Sopranos. See, I never saw any of that show. Yeah. I'm the Maybe. one. I'm the one that never saw any <laughs> of The Sopranos. Well, anything after season three is just not worth watching anyway. Oh, really? Yeah. It was only it was only written for three years. Yeah. For three seasons. That's all they had written. And then they got they, they exploded and HBO said, We want two more seasons. And they're like, shit, we don't have anything yeah, written. What do we gotta do? Okay. Anyway, so but anyway, yeah. So his character is much like that character, but you you how can I say this? You you fall for this guy. You do. You do. You and fall for this guy. He's so much more the what I think of a quintessential mob guy than than when I look at Sylvester Stallone in Tulsa King. Uh, in Tulsa King. Yeah. You know, he's you know, okay, maybe. But the other guys that surround him are more like the mob guys yeah. I think of in my and head. The guy, and the guys that this guy has at Lily Hammer, they're a bunch of goose, but they're they're cool. Yeah. It's almost like every person in Lily Hammer is kind of a dumbass. I mean, let's get real. Every single, they're bumbling, yeah. you know, none of them are real smart, you know, it yeah. just seems like, you know, and I'm thinking, what do the people in Lily Hammer think about this show? <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> you know, because they do, they kind of seem like they're all a bunch of dummies or whatever, but you find out that some of them have their own special set of skills. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like people you never thought that they would be, but yeah. he brings all this out in them and yeah. it's great. It's really great. It's yeah. a great show. 
it's just if you get a chance to watch it, watch the first season, okay, and see what happens. Yes. See how you feel. It's only eight episodes for the first season. Was it eight episodes? I think it was. I don't remember, I'm but sure, I don't remember. You can watch, you watch. I can only watch like two or three at a time because, because you of read. all the reading. You got to be kind of start getting a headache, but it's worth it. It's worth it. It it's is. Worth it. it is. All right. So the other thing that I had down here that I really um, diving into Steve Van Zandt, I found some other things out, and I prior to even watching Little Hammer, I had found something on the, on the interwebs uh, about his foundation, and he's the founder of Teach Rock, TeachRock.org, and I'm going to just read this straight from their um, their, their front page. Uh, TeachRock.org, which improves students' lives by bringing the sound, stories, and science of music to all classrooms. Launched by Stephen or Stevie Van Zant and the founders board of Bono, Jackson Brown, Martin Scorsese, and Bruce Springsteen, TeachRock.org provides free, standards-aligned resources that use music to help K-12 students succeed in science, math, social studies, language arts, and more. Teach Rock is a nonprofit open educational resource with more than 60,000 reg- registered educator users and the Teach Rock Partner District and Schools Program works directly with more than 100 schools in seven different states. How awesome is that, man? He knows that the power of the music and the what it can do to help the learning process for a young adult. Mm-hmm. That's one thing he's, he said, and I was written, watching the video, and he's, he said, I've always believed that teaching somebody music and the history of rock and roll and the history of music in the United States can open their minds up so they, they can e- more easily learn these other, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, ah, programs, I guess. Yeah. What's the word I'm looking for? There's another word I'm looking for. Damn it, Swiss cheese brain. Anyway. <laughs> well, you know, and, and I, I, I love people who try to bring music back into schools because I think that that's a – music should be a big part. Music and art. Yeah. Yes, music and art. Absolutely, because yeah. I put all those things into one category, yeah. music yeah. and art. Um, but, yeah, I think that's very good. It, it gives a child's brain more to – something else to focus on. That yeah. can also help them to stimulate their, to open their mind. Yeah, stimulate their mind for growth. You know, I think it's you know anybody who can play a musical instrument is a wonderment uh, to me. Yeah, I mean, I, I can play. I played alto sax. I can play. So anybody who can play anything else like a drummer, oh, I could never be a drummer. Oh my god! Because my brain can't do different things with my feet and my hands and everything else. I like can that. do a mean bongo with a note here. <laughs> <laughs> but drummers are uh, there's they, they they're awesome and so anybody who can play any kind of instrument I have always wished to play the piano. Well, I've never been able to take <clears throat> any kind of lessons. I've never had a piano, but no. I've always wanted to learn how to play the guitar. I've always wanted to learn how to I've play the guitar. I've always wanted to play the guitar. And I've always said it's something I'm gonna do. It's something I'm gonna do. But I just never. No. Never had, never gotten around, never like you know, that, bought just, that instrument to start so doing that with. Diving in a shark cage, which we got a picture of. Diving, in a shark well, cage. Okay, yeah. Anyway, Go ahead. but Sorry. I think it's I think learning a musical instrument, and it also gives a kid a little more um, belief in themselves that they can do something. Self esteem. So self esteem. Yes. Better self-esteem. You can do it. You know. Um, now that also goes along with taking any kind of sports out of school. Yeah. I was very good at sports. You know, and who would know that? What kid would know that you're good at something unless you are doing it yeah. and you figure out, I can really throw a ball. Yeah. You know, I can really make these baskets. And... I can really do this and that. So taking sports out of schools, you know, even if it's kindergarten, first grade, second grade, yeah. where do you think stuff starts? Yeah. You know, and if there's a parent that's like, well, you know, we don't have enough money for you to play baseball. You know, there's then they'll big, never there's, know. There's Those kids be will a way never to know. Help yeah, there's, there's got to, yeah. Be so, you know, and if kids uh, do well in these sports in school, that's the way you get these scholarships. And that's the way kids know that they're they good can, at something and that and they, they can, can do they it. And can, they can excel. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I, not for nothing, I think a lot of the big problems, and I agree with you. What you've said in past is, uh, they all started when we stopped keeping score. Thank <laughs> God, Scholastic Sports still keeps score. Yeah, I, I I knew that the first day back in, I guess it was probably mid '80s. 
I was at the Little League Fields after a game and standing around and all the little kids, all the little ones started running up, you know, get your free Coke after, yeah. the, after the game. You got that little ticket for a free Coke. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, hey, who won? And they're like, oh, we don't keep score. And I, I wish I could have had a picture of the look on my face. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean you don't keep score? <laughs> what? How do you know who wins? You know, well, nobody wins. Oh, you're right about that, little one. You right. are right about that. Nobody wins. So I knew right then this is not going to be good. It's not going to be you good. You know, with with not, you know, giving kids something to work for. Yeah. Where everybody's the same. You can do shitty. It doesn't matter. We're all the same. You can do the best and be the best. And everybody we're else is just same. like you because we're all the same. We're not all the same. And life is going to kick you in the nuts every chance it gets. Right, right. And, and another got... thing Sorry. about taking sports out of schools, especially kindergarten, first, second, third, whatever. Especially nowadays when you don't, kids don't have a chance to get out and run after school in their yard, in their yeah. neighborhood. They don't get a chance because yeah. their parents always have to have them within three feet because Helicopter parents. you never know what's going to happen to your kid when they step outside the door. Yeah. When we were kids, we would go and be gone yeah, and all day. It was get out the house. Yeah. Get out of the house. And it was great. And you came home, and you went to sleep, mm-hmm. and you were tired, and you slept. Mm-hmm. And you got up the next day, you went to school, you came home, you ran around, you played. Everything was great, you know? Mm-hmm. And now they can't do that. And so it's. I feel yeah. like all of our little ones are cooped up all yeah. the time, and they have all this stuff inside them that needs to come out, and it never gets to come out. And then they grow up to be teenage boys, and they start shooting up everything. Oh man! Sorry, that's my. That's rant. okay. No, I mean it, you're absolutely right. You know, um, there's they they have no way of getting any pent up energies out. Um, they're you you learn sort of self um, sufficiency. When you have to be out on your own all day long, you know, uh, how many kidnappings did we all avoid? You know, at least one or two, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I mean, I'm surprised that we're I'm still here to this day but, sometimes, but. But also back in the day, I started working when I was 11 years old. You were allowed to do stuff like that. Now the state of Texas, you can't, what is it, 14? You can't even be a babysitter unless you're 14 or older. Hmm. Yeah. I babysat my nephew when I was 10 years old. Oh yeah. 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 And I was working in my dad's restaurant at 11 years old. I would walk from the school down to the restaurant and work mm-hmm. in the restaurant. It was mm-hmm. a family business and we needed it. But on the weekends, I'd walk down to Maynard Downs because I wanted to hang out with the horses. And the managers back there got tired of me pestering them. So they put me to work for $5 an hour shoveling stalls so I could be by the horses and be of some use to them. You know? Right. I mean, so... That's stuff that kids don't get to yeah. do. And and people, you know, nowadays they're so, so quick to go with, oh, my kid has ADHD. Really? You know, just take like, him outside and let him play for a while. Yeah, no, he just, he's got all this stuff inside, or she, or, you know, she, he has all this stuff and they got to get all this stuff yeah. out. You know, you got to play, you got to run. We're not downplaying that either. There no. is, there, there are, are kids that have There problems. are kids that have those, those issues. But stuff. not as many. I mean, look how many prescriptions. Left and right. For it's little left kids, and right. It's the, the first stuff. thing they go and, to. And you have all these kids on drugs. First thing they go to. It's yeah. it's it's crazy to me. It's yeah. crazy I mean, to me. You should have to try everything else yeah. first before you know a doctor is allowed yeah. to just give you a pill. Yeah. You know, give this to him three times a day, and and he'll be so zonked out that he won't know what's going on, and your life will be better yeah. because you don't have to deal with it. I'm sorry. I don't mean to laugh, but we were in pop culture. We were. Oh, <laughs> we went... we, see, I do this. So I, it's my fault. I go. Well, it's off my and... fault. I brought that. I brought up TeachRock.org, which <laughs> is a great organization. From everything I've seen about this, and what, takes off to everything. What little Steven's done is is pretty awesome with yeah. this, you know. Yeah. And it takes us to the school thing, and it's a big thing. We've we've got grandkids that are going that are in school. One of them's one of a teenager. One of them's about to be a teenager, you know. Yeah, we worry. We worry about them. And um, honestly, unfortunately, it was the Gen X uh, generation, our generation. I, I lay a lot of blame on being helicopter parenting uh, on that. Uh, yeah, it's gone down now. It's the millennial ones that are the helicopter parents, but they're really helicopter parents. Yeah. You know, um, our when we were Gen Xers, we were the, the latchkey kids. Parents worked all day, both parents. Um and we were on the own. We we learned how to cook on our own. We learned how to take care of ourselves and everything like that. Mm-hmm. We were a self sufficient generation, right. which is what we are now. A, a lot of us. That's why we were kind of contentious and and grouchy and rowdy. And you know, don't be a blight on society. Take care of your own shit. Right. That's my. Uh, right. Just take care of your own shit. Yeah. Because I mean, nowadays with with parents who 
have just become parents, maybe in the last, you know, five, ten years, you will find that a lot of them, like my mom, when, when I was five, six, seven years old, she would, when it, or I don't say about 11, 10 or 11, she started working and, uh, she would actually come home and we go to the ball fields, you know, nowadays these parents come home and they want to sit on the couch and play video games. Yeah. They don't want to take their kids to the park. They don't want to take their kids, you know, wherever to let them run around and have, Which I guess time. if you, if you are a helicopter parent, uh-huh. but you're one of the one that is constantly pushing your kids to do things. I guess maybe that's not so bad, but if you've got them doing a million things, jujitsu yeah. on Tuesday, tap dance on uh, Wednesday, yeah, that's, that's, that's that's a little too much. Yeah, that's too much. But get them out of the house. Yeah. Go do things with yeah. them. And they don't have to do any kind of organized sport. Just take them somewhere and let them run around with the other kids. Yeah. Let them, you know, yeah. get their hollering out and they want to holler it, you know, ah, kids, ah, you know, they run around and they, you know, throw a ball or throw a football yeah. or, you know, whatever. Just, you know, take them, let them do that. For, you know, an hour. Let them be kids. You know, yeah. Let them, let them be kids. You know, because they're cooped up in school mm-hmm. or at home, wherever you teach them. Yeah. And they have to be, you know, good and they have to learn. And then they get home and they're cooped up in the house because, mm-hmm. you know, you're seven. <laughs> you can't go anywhere by yourself. You can't get in the car and drive <laughs> to the park, you know. So what are you going to do? And they just sit there. Yeah. You know, and they're like, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? What do, I do? And, 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 you know, it's, it's uh, some sad. Aspect, some aspects, the, the, the world, you know, I guess because of the, the access to information, the world has become painfully obvious that I, most people are, there's there's a ton of sick people out there. So, yeah, I can understand being helicopter parents, you know. Yeah. But our generation, they didn't have that, you know. and Well, well we didn't know they were out we there, didn't but they know were they, out there. They were out there. We didn't know they were out yeah. there, you know. Yeah, yeah. it's like I so, used to say, oh, this didn't, this didn't happen when I was a kid. But then you start watching all these, you know, murder, death, yeah. mayhem shows, and you realize, oh a lot my god, of shit that was my 70s. neighborhood. What the shit? <laughs> right? It's like, oh, that happened. That was just, you know, oh 100, 100 yeah. miles away from where I live that all this happened. You yeah. know, so you just didn't know. You didn't and I don't know. know are we better off knowing everything all the time? I don't know. I honestly don't know if we are. Would everybody be so mad at each other about politics if we didn't have the 24-hour news cycle? And right, and we know every little thing that's said, instantly. every little thing that's done. The instant notification when something's posted, and it's the same story posted by every platform. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, and then are we better off? You get to know that, you know, 10 people were shot and killed yeah. in California two days ago. Yeah. Right? You know, it's like, oh my God, uh, mass murder, mass murder, mass murder. I don't and, know. Yeah. I, I think that has a lot to do with the depression and anxiety. Yeah, that everybody feels now why everybody's on something and why they need to put Xanax in the yeah. water. <laughs> oh God, no, don't do that. You know, has maybe... nobody has nobody seen Firefly Serenity? They tried that on the Mar- on the what Martha Marsha Planet or whatever the hell know, it was. Maybe that's what we need. And people just went to sleep <laughs> at their station. The oh my God! Everybody drink it. We'll all be a lot happier. You know, I mean, you just find so many people are just so angry that they they go off just like that. I mean, just yeah. In, in an instant, they will go off and they will kill somebody and ruin the rest of their life, their family's lives, that person they kill's life. When, all the, you know, it's it's a, it's a momentary thing. It's why why have we gotten to that point? Right. And, and growing up, we were if you had a problem, you talked about it, or you stepped outside, fist a cuff, took care of it. Whoever went down first, you lose. Let me help you up. Let's go buy a beer and get over it. Yeah. You know, uh, why do we got to pull knives? Why do we got to pull guns? Why do you just got to push people in front of the freaking subway? Right. Well, those people are nuts. Those people are crazy. Nuts. Yeah. Why would you ride the subway these days anyway? I, there's no be... freaking way I would get down there. I wouldn't either, but some people, that's the only way they have. Oh, my God. You know, and that's the that's only nuts. way. Especially that's like in nuts. a place like New York City where it's really expensive to own a vehicle. That's true because you got to pay for parking. you got to pay for parking and everything, mm-hmm. and it's just really expensive. And if you don't work that far away. <laughs> we thought Boston was expensive for oh parking. Oh, my God. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. But anyway, I digress. Yeah, we again. digress big time on that. I'm sorry. We're supposed to be on pop culture and things that we've done. Yeah. So let's. Uh, we're running on an hour right now. We're going to touch okay. on one last thing here and one give you a little thing. heads up of what's going on tomorrow. Okay. Uh, so we went to the Texas State Aquarium. Yeah, Corpus. It was so much fun. Yeah, we love things like this, man. It was awesome. For me, I like. 
I like all kinds of things, but the first thing I saw were the otters, and I had, <laughs> I had to go see the otters. They're so cute. And we're going to have some video if you're a part of... Oh, my God. We haven't done the business side of things. <gasps> oh, my oh. God. Patreon.com, Stuart Perspective. If you want to get all the extra stuff, like the video version of the show, where I'm going to have a lot of the video from the Texas State Aquarium. Uh, what else? Oh, we're on Podbean. Stuart Perspective on Podbean. Spread that around. If people don't want to pay to be a part of the of the uh, Patreon, show them where Podbean is. We Podbean. need to get the supporters up on Podbean. So if I get enough shows going on there, enough people on there, I can spread that over to Spotify, Apple, and stuff like that, and we can, we can grow the show. Um, what else was there? I'm sorry. Reaper. Reaper. ReaperApparelCo.com. Okay. Uh, big boys out there, if you want the 4X shirts, this company's got them. they got great logos. Yeah, and, pretty cool um, stuff. And we saw the other day... Um, one of the guys on, was it Bering Sea Gold? Bering Sea Gold was wearing Reaper was apparel. Reaper. Yeah. yeah right so, on. Right on. Yeah, very right cool. On. So Great stuff. We're not the only ones wearing it. We're not. <laughs> ReaperApparelCode.com. Use the promo call, code Uncle Mongrel, and you'll get an extra 10% off, and it helps get a little kickback to the show and help us out. Okay? Uh, you can also donate directly to um, PayPal.me slash Raw Communications, and that just goes directly into the fund, and you can send us a note saying, hey, Buy a six pack on me so you get drunk on the show. Maybe it'd be funnier. You know, who knows? <laughs> be funnier. Oh god, that's the business side. Okay. I'm surprised we didn't do that. Wow, really. that's awesome. That was quick. Okay. Okay. Texas State Aquarium otters. The otters were cute as They're shit. So one cute. of them was taking a sleep in the sun, and the other one was playing around and went over and started hitting them on the head. Hey, hey, hey! He come was play talking with me. to him, hey. making their little noises, and he was like <laughs> making. You know, I was like, oh, he says, come play with me, come play with me. And so finally, after like I don't know, two or three minutes of this. The one finally gets up and goes, oh, fine. And jumps in the water and starts playing. with him. <laughs> it was, so it was awesome. That was awesome. Did, uh, they, uh, we got there at a time where if you if you read the little pamphlet and stuff, they have these different shows. And we were able to hit one show right after another, right after another, right after another. And we did the stingray feeding. We saw the sea turtles. We saw an alligator. We saw tons of fish, dolphin show, and shark shows. It was amazing. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I got, uh, well, when I was up in Boston, we went to the aquarium and I got to like pet the, the stingrays. It's pretty cool. Uh, this here, they let you do that, but the water is a lot deeper. Well, <laughs> so it was you really have to stick your hand down in there to, to, to well, get one. Also, this was the feeding one with the feeding show. Yeah. So they actually put a little smollet in my hand and Robin tried it. And her hand got cold in the water, so she uh, gave it to they, me. They take so long to come get it. And then I was kind of also getting a little... I don't know if I want one. I don't know what's going to feel like. Oh my God. So I was getting kind of, you know. So uh, she gave it to me and I stuck my hand down in there and, and one of them came along and sucked it right off my hand. It was really cool. The end is... So you got sucked off? Yes. Ah, <laughs> ghost. Ghost. Yeah, watch the, the show TV ghost. Show ghost. It's awesome. So um, yeah, so I got to do that twice. I got to yes, feed a sting right yes. That was and awesome. And I love the turtles. They're just... Yeah. I don't know. There's something about them. They're just so beautiful. And it just really... Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it. you also get to see, like they have a thing on the wall showing different um things like garbage basically oh the that things was that taken off, off of the turtles. These turtles like all the fishing line the fishing, fishing line, lures, lures stuck and, to uh, them and it just oh it just makes me so angry I and, and i get they, it i get it I, I've, I've done fishing and i get it it happens you're gonna break yeah. a line and well, stuff like that but it still sucks yeah it's but it still, just uh, it still is but the thing that we can do something about was he showed plastic bottles plastic bottles and how you know, these turtles, they don't know it's not some kind of food. Right. You know, so they take bites out of it and they swallow it and it doesn't digest. And so it they just get pass full. Through. Yeah. It just sits there in their stomachs and it makes them sick and it kills them. Or they get full and they feel like they're full and they don't eat and right. they die. Yeah. They don't feel like they're, yeah. And that, you know, and we walk down where we're staying right now in Rockport, there's a, a habitat right next to us that we, you know, go walking on and stuff. Yep. Videos on the uh, Patreon. Yes. And, I'm, I keep saying I'm going to take a garbage bag down there next time we go because I, I see so many plastic bottles yeah. and uh, glass bottles, garbage. garbage. There's all kinds Just, of garbage. There were people that go fishing gloves. down there. Yes. And oh they leave God. their crap and it ticks me off. It's yeah. like there's this beautiful yeah. area and this beautiful, you know, the God, whoever you, know, you want to believe in, has given us this beautiful animals, these beautiful yeah. for you. You know, and then you want to go and put garbage and, and stuff then in the And they habitat. walk, they walk the dogs down there, and their dogs crap, and they don't pick it up. There is a sign yeah. before you step foot on there that says, "Leashes are the law," and pick, yeah, pick up your dogs. But I dogs see where refuse. it says, you know, pack, pack it in, pack it out. Mm -hmm. 
you know, that means everything. And people obviously don't do that because there's no, so much garbage down no. there that it really, it, it, yeah. it it's, it's, it's horrible. Sometimes and I can imagine I, I all th- the beaches are like that. Sometimes I think we're the only ones that pick up our dog's poop sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes, Honestly. Sometimes Honestly. I feel that way. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, anyway. that was, that was the turtles <laughs> things. Uh, they only had one alligator and he was just chill as can be. Yeah, and his name was Spike. Yeah. <laughs> He had a sister, and then she got he got they got a little older, and he got annoyed with her, and so they had to move her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah. yeah, he was cool. And um, let's see the I just love all animals. I don't really care yeah. if they're they, under the water or in the jungle. They had a bunch of uh, they had a bunch of little tanks with the um, hermit crabs that you could reach in yeah. and you could pet the hermit crabs. All the stuff. little little tiny cool. ones and the big ones, and they were all so yeah. cute. All the different fish in the world and yeah. jellyfish, man. They were so jellyfish, kinds of jellyfish really man. cool. All the fishes and the dolphin. I love the dolphins. They were but, cool. Yeah, they were they awesome. They did uh, they were a awesome. show for they, us. They did a little show for us and proper training and everything yeah. like that. And I got as much of that all as I could. It was uh, towards the end of the afternoon. The sun was bearing down on us. Yeah. So I think it actually, I only got about six minutes of it because I had my phone recording. So I didn't have a camera other than my phone. But uh, the sun was glaring on it, and I think it overheated the camera. It <laughs> shut yeah. off the camera at yeah. six, about six and a half minutes. So yeah. and then the I shark, got Sharks are always cool to watch. But I just oh, want to see, like, big sharks. They don't really have any big ones yeah. there. They got are just, like, medium They had sand sharks, some sand yeah. sharks in there. But yeah. they, they were still, they're still hey, cool. We got a couple of the, the dome glass and stuff where you're sitting there, and the thing goes right over your head. Over your like, head. Ah. I know. It's kind of creepy. I'm just like, <laughs> I really want to be in the water with yeah. these things. And they had a shark cage that you got to go stand in a shark cage. So <laughs> I got a picture of you in a shark cage. Yeah, that was, that yeah. was cool. But yeah. It was and a fun, it was a very fun day. They do a lot of, um, one of, they're one of uh, only a, f- a handful of facilities that are licensed in the state of Texas for rehabilitation. Yeah. For, uh, for, especially for sea turtles. Are you? Sea turtles. <laughs> wow. That's, I didn't know that. Yeah. Only a few places are, are licensed in the state of Texas and they're yeah. one of them. Very cool. And, uh. But then we also got to see the flamingos. Oh, that's my story. Okay, if you if you followed any of my story, you hear me on my Facebook page or whatever, you see me post about walking Paco one morning, and we're out on the sandbar, and the sun is shining across the wetlands, and I, this one bird raised its head and shouted off a warning shot, and then all of a sudden, like a dozen flamingos took off flying. All I saw were big pink birds flying, and it was astoundingly beautiful, and I declared that I saw a flock of flamingos. Well, in the back of my brain, my stupid little voice kept tapping me, tap, 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 are you sure those were flamingos? I really so like sure. your pink shirt you're wearing for pink this story. Shirt for this story, yeah, yeah it is. The big flamingos. So, yeah, so it, that kind of, that kind of, kept bugging me at the back of my mind were those really flamingos you know what and so i didn't really look into it but we were at we we're at the um the aquarium and they have a caribbean exhibit and so the first thing you do when you walk into the caribbean exhibit is they've got a flock of freaking pink flamingos beautiful they are beautiful and they are not the birds i saw <laughs> they are very large <laughs> very very large definitely not the birds that i saw so then my next thought was well what the hell did i see so we keep walking around. He literally walk around the next corner, and there's a little mango swamp area, and they have these scarlet ibises. I'm like, that's it. That looks like the little. He was about that size, but man, he's really pink. I think these guys had a white head. I could, I didn't think it, was, it can't be the scarlet ibis, and it was just pecking at me while we finished our tour and everything. And figuratively. We, figuratively, <laughs> not the bird. I mean, figuratively. <laughs> I think it was actually pecking at me. <laughs> my, the little gray squishy thing in my head was pecking at me. <laughs> So we, we left and we had to go eat and we're sitting there eating. I'm like, I just couldn't stand it. I, I placed my order and I grabbed my phone and I started looking. And I looked at the scarlet ibis and sure enough, it's a South American bird. And the only North American um, section of the, the country that is in its natural habitat is far South Florida in the mango swamps. I'm like, well, shit, it wasn't a scarlet ibis. Okay, yeah. what was it? So I started doing, I went down a rabbit hole looking at all kinds of birds, the coastal birds in um, Texas, and turns out it's a rosette spill, spoonbill, rosette spoonbill, and it is a cousin of the flamingo, but it is a southern part of the North America, southern United mm-hmm. States. Yeah, because we are definitely not part of the Caribbean. No, we're not part of the Caribbean, <laughs> but they're at this time of year, their primary habitat is actually listed. One of their regions, actual listed, is the Aransas Pass. Aransas National Wildlife Refuge, which is 
for us driving, it's in the middle of nowhere. It's about 45 minutes for us to drive to it because we drove to it. Yeah. Um, but for the birds, I'm sure it's probably like about 15 minutes straight as a fly, <laughs> fly yeah. for them. But that's their natural habitat. So it's it, it makes sense that in their flight path, they'd stop here at the wetlands because mm-hmm. we're in line right there with it. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, ah, mystery solved. That little gray squishy thing can stop pecking at me. Yeah. And then I, literally the next day I took Paco out uh, walking and they were back. Yeah. The, the rosette spoonbills were out there and they were on the other side of the, the boardwalk there. So I was took Paco for a walk. He didn't scare him off. I didn't scare him off. I got him back here. I grabbed my phone. I ran back out there. Well, he didn't run. He did not run. People. I don't. I don't run. <laughs> I can't run. Are you freaking kidding? I'm sorry. Figuratively, I ran back out there. And so I, I walk down the, the boardwalk, and I'm taking pictures of them and stuff because I'm afraid if I get too close, they're gonna they're gonna fly away. And I made it to the to the the main one of the main sitting areas where you can actually photograph. And I got some pretty good footage of them. And the videos are up there on the, on the YouTube and and stuff like that. So I'll throw them in this um, video version of this podcast too so you can have those but they're really cool and sure enough yeah they had the white heads and the white breast and the rest of their body is pink and they are considered the southern cousins of the flamingos and they their color comes from the diet they eat which is the pink shrimp hmm. and krill and 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 fish of that ilk i was like wow that's awesome i had no idea now i do and thank you, Texas State Aquarium, for helping me figure that out. Because yeah. <laughs> your flamingos are awesome. One, yes. of them did, one of them did this little wild little dance where he looks at me, shook his head, lowered his head. Then he scrunched his, his back up and put his wings out and was like, Whoa. It was beautiful. I was like, oh, well, wait, maybe I'll do it again. And he did it again. He did it again. Like, oh, cool. Well, dude, are you flirting with me? What's going yeah. on? I don't know. <laughs> uh, am I a threat? And you're telling yeah, me to back off, bud? It was really, really pretty and lots of... Lots of neat stuff to see there. If you have yeah. a chance to go, I, I, at first I thought, oh my gosh, this is like really pricey. It's like 38 bucks a person to go. And it came out to about $84 with parking. Okay. So it's five, five bucks to park. Yeah. yeah. But we spent a lot of time there and there's lots of yeah. stuff to do. And they, uh, they honestly, if you, if you read about it, it says the average guests will spend about four hours there. And mm-hmm. I'll be a we spent about four hours and 20 minutes there. Yeah. I mean, but the, uh, it's just so much to see, so much to do. They have interactive stuff. If you have kids, it's really cool. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was just really, a really neat place. And I yeah. was like, that was, uh, that was very cool. They have lots of people there that are very helping knowledgeable. with these birds. Yeah. Uh, with all these animals and they know what they're talking about and helping, you know, to, to con- conserve, you know, to really help all the animals so yeah. it's really cool and well worth it well worth it so go check that texas state aquarium in corpus christi yeah texas so um wow that is i think that's really wrapping up yeah. the what, show well kind oh, of what on. are we doing tomorrow oh, what no, is tomorrow yeah. honey tomorrow's our anniversary tomorrow is our nine year anniversary. nine year nine year this is wednesday the 25th tomorrow is thursday the 26th yeah. and that is our anniversary yes. nine, nine years nine long wonderful years years I love you, honey. <laughs> so we are going to go and do a couple things. One, um, the, um, oh God, is it the Lexington? Yes. The Lexington USS is, Lexington. USS Lexington is over there by the Texas State Aquarium. And it too has, says it'd be about a four hour. Most people spend about four hours there. They have escape rooms. We might try an escape room yeah. with some perfect like they strangers. Have all, they have like places to eat and everything on that yeah. ship. Yeah. So it'll be interesting. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. We're going to go check it out. Every level, it's self-guided tours, escape rooms. You know, we might try an escape room with some strangers and see how that goes. See if it was us or if it was our family. I don't know. Our family was dragging us <laughs> down. That's who it uh, was. I think it was a team effort, actually. <laughs> it kind of was. I think it was a team effort. We all played our part. Yeah. Anyway, so we'll, we'll check that out. We're going to have some fun with that. And then we're going to go have our, our annual uh, dinner. Or we're going to go have a good steak. Yeah. We're going to have... We go to uh, Longhorn Steakhouse every yeah. year to have our yeah. dinner. And... Be- it, it, and tell, one reason why is because we've traveled so much in these last seven years that everywhere we were at was usually something somewhere new. And the consistent thing yeah. was Long that Steakhouse. restaurant, Longhorn you Steakhouse. You always get good food there. It's consistent product all yeah. across the country. Yeah. And it's real And surprisingly, another one that has that, Pizza Hut. <laughs> uh, the Longhorn That's Steakhouse. True. Pizza Hut and Texas uh, Roadhouse Cafe. Texas Roadhouse, yeah. Texas Roadhouse, was, all of it was good up north. Yeah, it's it con- consistent you know. product. But that's 
we enjoy it there. We get a, a really good steak. We get a nice baked potato. We get some appetizers, and we get their yeah. their little uh, margarita. That's really yeah. really good. Yeah, and we kind of make that our our celebration place for you know our birthdays. Yeah. and our anniversary. That's yeah, where we go. it's our little so. treat to ourselves. So, yeah, because it's it, it'll be pricey. It'll it's, be pricey. Yeah. Yeah, so that's yeah. we so, don't do that so very donate. often. So donate, donate to the show, <laughs> help us out. Please, help. please help, please, yes, please. <laughs> We're dying here. If anything, go out there to try and help boost our egos a little bit, because we still only have one true patron on Patreon. Thank you, Aunt Linda. <laughs> Thank we you, love Aunt you. Linda. <laughs> We have mm-hmm. we have like 70, 71 people now on the last episode. Seventy one people. Wow. Poked poked onto it and wow. listened to it and everything like that. I don't I don't have the stats on how long they listen to the show, but they listen to the show for crying out loud. So that's cool. But um, click the button and be a patron. I got yeah. some pretty cool videos on there for it's, you. It's five bucks a month. Okay, I go to Starbucks and you spend five something on a coffee. Well, here's what's... so come on. Yeah. Don't say I don't have five dollars. <laughs> here, right this minute, yeah, it's we're we're still new, we're still growing. Right this minute, I've only got like four four videos and an extra show or something on there for you right. to watch. So five dollars, do I mean, it one time. Come on and listen to one us. Time. We've got to be entertaining. We've got to be entertaining <laughs> on some level. We make us laugh. I mean, <laughs> Paco, Paco's dancing over here. He's got to go by the door. So I think that's a uh, that's the sign we're having the show. Okay. Hey, well, thanks hey. everybody. Uh, go do all the things. Help us out and all that good stuff. Anyway, uh, as usual, we'll see you guys next time. Love, peace, and bacon grease, y'all. Mmm, bacon. <laughs>